In this video, we're going to be looking at focus stacking. We're also going to be looking at blending in a long exposure for the water using a hide-all mask. Along with that, I'm going to show you one of the methods I use for correcting distortion, especially in this case when buildings are involved. Let's dive right in. Do we focus stack? We focus stack so that all elements within your image are sharp. In this case especially, the grass in the foreground was between 18 and 23 centimetres away at the most. So when I focus on the castle in the background, the grass in the foreground would be out of focus. Possibly only slightly, but I wanted it as sharp as possible. So I shifted my focus point throughout the image so that I can get this and what the video is going to show you is how I blended it together for this. Normally I manually focus through live view for these uh, but in this case I wanted to try back button focus so I have images this one that you'll see during the edit and then images at the end that are manually focused so you can make up your own mind what ones you think work best. Now this composition wasn't my favourite but it's the one that I'm going to use for the video and at the end of the video, I'll show you my compositions that I actually preferred, and they were only two feet to the left of this one. The sun was setting, the sky was changing, so I had to work quick, so I didn't have time to actually make a video on this one. Okay, let's look at the points of focus that I chose for this. The first one being the castle in the distance. The second one being the rocks here. The third one being these rocks here. And the fourth one, and I'll zoom out for this one, is this area here with the grass. So we have 0.1, 0.2, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. I'd also like to say that if I'd shot at f14 or f16 and focused just in these three areas, that the image would have worked as well. Because there was so many undulations in the image, I wanted to focus more around the entire image. And it's always best to shoot more than you'll actually need for this. You'll also notice that there is a fifth image. I didn't go for an exposure blend for the sky for this, just for the purposes of the video, but you will see later on other images that I did do that for. I'm just going to show you here. This was a focus, a long exposure for the water, and it was 30 seconds in total for this. The focus for this was the castle in the distance again and then a 30 second exposure. So what I'll do is I'll jump in and I'll now show you how I brought all these images together. Okay, now that we've looked at the focus points for it and how we actually focused for this image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I correct for the distortion within this. As you can see, the castle, especially here where it's silhouetted, is leaning quite far back. So that's not how the castle actually is. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to work, it doesn't matter what image I use here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with that one and I'm going to go straight down into transform. For me, I prefer guided transform for correcting areas like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose guided and the tool you see here is now taken up by the mouse. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a cross, put the cross here on the horizon or as near to the horizon as I possibly can and draw a line horizontal. So that's how I've got our first line in. The second line, I'm going to do the same with the castle. So I'm going to go to the bottom of the castle roughly. It can be quite fidgety, but roughly about there and draw a line up the front face of the castle. Now if I want to check that line I can go in and zoom in here but what I'm going to do for the purposes of this is that. The castle is now vertical but for me for this image too vertical. So if I drop the tool a second you'll see what I mean. So you can see that the castle is now leaning in towards the horizon line so I'm going to adjust that. And how we do that is I take the tool again, you can see they're both still there. And I'm going to push the bottom away from the horizon line. And I am guessing here. Let's try that one. Still a bit too much. So let's try a final time. 
and we'll just take it there. Right, for me that's a bit better and for the purposes of this video it lets you see how to actually correct this when it comes to buildings. By doing this, as you notice, we'll lose some of the image as well. So I'm not too bothered about that though because losing there, I'm still going to have enough coming in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sync the rest of the edits with that. So basically what I do with that one highlighted, hold down the control key and select the rest. And you'll notice that previous now turns to sync. So I'm going to press sync and we have all the synchronized settings here and we have white balance, basic tone, shadows. The only one that I want to affect, and I'm going to leave process version on, the only one I really need to keep on for this one is transform and that's upright transform, transform adjustments. So if I click synchronize, you'll notice that the rest of the edits have now synchronized to that. So when I go into Photoshop now to overlay them, they'll all work quite well. But I've another thing to do before I do that as well. And what I'm going to do is balance out these images. Same idea again. I am going to bring back the highlights with this one. Uh, bring back the, the highlights with this one, just slightly. Uh, lift the shadows just ever so slightly. I'm not going to do too much for this. I'm going to put a touch of dehaze in there as well and then select the remaining four. Holding down control. Then I'm going to click synchronize and I'm going to put on white balance, basic tone, and I'm going to turn off transform for this and click synchronize because we've already transformed this. And these settings here have now been applied to the rest of the images. For this one here, I've got to edit this one slightly separately. So what I'm going to do is definitely bring the highlights down in this. This was not my final image, to be honest. But for the purposes of this video, we'll go with it. I'll just bring that back up a bit there. I've got a tiny bit to play with here, but not too much. So you can see that there. I'm going to warm this up just slightly. So we'll be working with these five images. How we get them into Photoshop, hold down shift, select them all, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, as you can see now, all of these have opened up in, as layers in Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is I always copy them up. So the first thing I'm going to do is hold down shift, and press Control and J. So that copies up these ones here. So that's another five on top. Then I'm going to select from here down to the bottom and I'm going to put them in a folder in that group there. And I'm going to turn the group off. You can leave the group on or turn it off, but in this case, I'm going to turn it off. So that's my backup. Plus I may need to use some of the images from that. Then what we do is select bottom layer or the top one, then select the top one so that they're all selected. Go over to Edit, Auto Align Layers. And I'm going to leave this at Auto for this one. Click OK. And Photoshop just now is aligning these images up based on the content. Now that Photoshop has lined these up, I need to go in and blend them all together. But there's one layer in particular I don't want blended and it's this layer here. I'm going to manually blend that one, and that's the long exposure layer that will include the sky. So what I'm going to do is uncheck that one and just blend the four of these together. So then I go back up to Edit, Auto Blend Layers, click OK. And the reason I didn't want to blend that in is because I'm going to manually paint that one back in. So there we have it, there's is all the layers blended together, except for this layer here, which I can now move to the top. Now that that's taken place, what I can do now is I can crop the image. And for me, I'm going to take it in here just to show you, I'm not going to crop out too much of this. I'm just going to take it into the edges, but be aware that when you do this, there may be lens breathing. So to take it in a tiny bit further, might be the best option for you. So I'll just take it into there. I'm not even going to go for any aspect ratio for this, just to, for the purposes of this video. So I'm just going to click OK. 
Now that Photoshop has done its business and went through and created masks and determined the sharpest points from each of these images to combine into one image, we want to do the same. So what we're going to do is select the top layer, Shift, Control, Alt and E, and that copies them all into one single layer. So I'm, I can turn these off. What we've got to do now is we have to combine that layer into here. Now there is many ways of doing this and my preference is using luminosity masks via Lumensia. Also there is another program that I use as well which is the Pro Panel and that will do as well by creating luminosity masks based on light, dark and mid-tones. But for the purposes of this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to manually blend this just in case you're not used to working with masks. So hopefully this will help you a little bit. So I've selected that layer, you can now see it's visible. You can turn that one off, turn it back on. I'm now going to hide that. For me, I prefer to paint in than erase. So if I select that layer, then go down to the mask, hold down Alt, it will create a hide all mask, meaning I have to paint in white to bring through any aspects of this layer. So I'm going to take the brush at 100% and what I'll do is I'll get through this as quick as possible and I'll speed the video up for you as well. So here we go. You'll notice that there's warmer tones and cooler tones between the two images and what I'm doing is I'm turning down the opacity in between the blend where they bleed over each other. I'll cover more of this technique in a future video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this back into Lightroom and then I'll show you the final edit. Compositionally, this doesn't actually work, but at least it shows you the techniques involved to create the image. Other images that I took when I stepped to the left slightly work better. And then finally, I took the image that I was happiest with. And that was only a few minutes later in the evening. Hopefully you got something from that and hopefully it lets you see how focus stacking can be employed in your landscape photography. As I said at the very beginning, I could have probably shot that image in three focus points and had the entire image sharp throughout. But I like to take more than I probably need just to be safe. And it's I would say it's a good idea to do that anyway. Thanks again for watching. Remember, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.